Good morning from Japan and good afternoon to all of you back in Iowa, or as they say in Japanese, konnichiwa. Uh, it's actually 7.15 a.m. Wednesday morning here, and we are gearing up for our final full day of meetings. Uh, we arrived in Japan on Saturday, and our 24-member Iowa delegation has met with numerous Japanese companies that are interested in either investment or trade with Iowa. In addition to that, we had an excellent opportunity to meet with government officials in both Yamanashi Prefecture and in Tokyo. Um, as all of you may know, our longest standing sister state relationship is with Yamanashi. In fact, uh, next year we're going to celebrate 60 years of that relationship. And I had the pleasure of meeting with uh, Yamanashi Governor Nagasaki this past weekend. And the history of the Iowa Yamanashi relationship really began in 1959 when a typhoon devastated Yamanashi Prefecture, uh, which is west of Tokyo. In response, Iowa uh, offered some agricultural products. We sent 36 breeding hogs and 100,000 bushels of corn uh, to help them recover. And that event is famously known as the hog lift. And still to this day, almost all the hogs in Yamanashi Prefecture have a genetic connection to Iowa. And honestly, then they reciprocated with that same support um, when Iowa was devastated with, with flooding uh, on two separate occasions. So I think that story really sums up the friendship that Iowa has with Yamanashi and really all of Japan. We talked a lot about that when we were meeting with the different businesses, that our relationship goes back almost 60 years, and we've continued to nurture and grow and strengthen uh, that relationship. I'm really pleased with all of the discussions and the meetings that have taken place during our visit to Japan. Ultimately, the strategy uh, has been to increase both exports as well as foreign direct investment. It's a vital and a necessary component for our overall economic development strategy. And leading trade missions such as this one really opens doors for the state. And the delegates that are able to attend with us um, who would, might be otherwise um, closed or unavailable to participate in some of those meetings. Exporting is an integral part of our economy. Not only does export generate billions of dollars annually, but it also enables Iowa companies um, to expand operations and create quality jobs for Iowans. And there's really no better testament to the success that we've seen in exporting than to take a look at our numbers in 2018 where we exported a total, a total of $18 billion in goods last year. Japan is an important partner, and we want to encourage Iowa companies to get involved in the Japanese market. For obvious reasons, it's a substantial and dominant economic power. Japan is our third largest trading partner. We exported $1.5 billion worth of goods to Japan in 2018. And the opportunities for Iowa to increase trade with Japan are immense, especially with the passage of the U.S.-Japan Trade Agreement. And that certainly was a key part uh, of discussion with most of the meetings that we held. And just uh, is, uh, the belief that there is a tremendous amount of opportunity uh, for market uh, share, uh, to gain market share with the U.S.-Japan Trade Agreement. In terms of investment, since 2010, Japanese companies have made over $290 million in capital investments in Iowa. And we've seen companies like Ajinomoto, Bridgestone, uh, Valent Biosciences, NSK, Nippon Life Insurance, uh, they all have uh, Iowa operations. So based on the meetings that we have had during the mission trip, I'm really positive that we've laid in, uh, the foundation for similar investments uh, in the future. And just to really say thank you for your existing investment and, and how can we help you expand and grow uh, in our great state. So I have been very pleased uh, to have a co-lead on this trade mission, and that has been Iowa's uh, Outstanding Secretary of Agriculture, Mike Meg, and Mike, I'll turn it over to you, and you can give an update on uh, uh, the trip. Well, thank you, uh, Governor Reynolds, and good afternoon to uh, all of you, and thank you for joining us. We've had a, uh, we really had a very productive uh, several days here, a quick trip uh, to Japan, but very, very productive, and looking forward to uh, one final day here of, of uh, meetings, and, uh, you know, in a state like Iowa, where uh, trade is so critically important to us, uh, Iowa is number two in the nation when it comes to the value of our food and agriculture exports. And so uh, going on trade missions and doing this kind of thing is critically important to our continued success in agriculture. Uh, of course, uh, as the governor mentioned, Japan is a, a very, very important market to us, number three on the list, uh, and, uh, you know, number one outside of North America. 
So Canada and Mexico uh, being number one and number two, and, and Japan uh, coming in third. We have a great group traveling with us, uh, representatives, leadership from the Iowa Pork Producers, the Beef Industry Council, uh, the Iowa Corn Promotion Board, Farm Bureau, along with uh, several other leading uh, uh, representatives from companies, and uh, again, a very, very uh, good group that's uh, uh, high profile and, and traveling with us and engaged in these meetings. We've had great meetings with customers. It's always interesting to uh, travel and see how our products are presented to consumers in other countries to understand the, the types of traits and characteristics that those customers are looking for and just generally understand how those products are being uh, marketed. It's always uh, an interesting thing and a valuable thing for us. Um, Governor Reynolds mentioned it, but it's, we're doing something that Iowa does very well and something we've done very well for years, and that's uh, going meeting with customers around the world. Uh, it's a sign of respect for our customers. It's a sign of appreciation for the business that we've done together. And it's uh, a recognition of a lot of hard work that's been put in by a lot of folks, uh, government officials, uh, uh, commodity groups, grower groups, and, and uh, certainly the Economic Development Authority, and uh, many folks who have uh, allowed us to get to where we are today over the last couple of decades here in Japan. Uh, generally, I would say that the feeling is one of great optimism uh, here. While we've been on the ground, there's uh, a lot of potential here, and uh, the future, I think, is very bright. We're looking at expanded opportunities in this market due to the uh, recently agreed to uh, free, uh, trade agreement, and also uh, a lot of talk about how that's a phase one trade agreement that deals with food and agriculture and, and digital uh business, but uh, what comes next is a negotiations on a full free trade agreement, and uh, that that will start in earnest uh, a few months after the this uh, first phase trade agreement is finalized. So one of great optimism and uh, continued opportunity in this uh, this country. So again, Governor, great to be with you, and, and uh, we're, uh, again, looking forward to a very productive day today as we finish up this uh, trade mission in Japan. Thank you. Pat, before we take questions, I also wanted to acknowledge that uh, Iowa Economic Development Authority Director Debbie Durham has, of course, been with us on the trip also, and her and her team have done a great job of setting up the meetings. Uh, we had a reception last night at the uh, uh, residence of, at the embassy, and it was uh, very well att attended. So just appreciate uh, her continued efforts in helping us uh, drive uh, continued growth in the state. <laughs> All right, we are getting ready to um, open it up for questions. If anyone wants to hit the hand, raise your hand icon, and we will call on you individually. Uh, David Pitt, Associated Press, go ahead. Guys, the trade relationship with Japan as you see it now, any, any damage done by the tariff battles or trade policies that we've seen in the last few years? Is there a willingness to restore some normalcy in trade? Does it seem uncertain? Maybe you can just characterize it for us. Yeah, well, I think the Secretary hit it on the head. It is the meetings have been very optimistic. They talk a lot about the relationship between the Prime Minister and the President and their willingness to work together. Um, we, we are an important market for them, and they are certainly an important market for us. And so a lot of optimism with the first phase with the U.S.-Japan uh, trade agreement, and as the secretary said, um, it, it, and it's moving through the, the diet, which is their Congress. Uh, right now it's moving through the lower house, and they anticipate it moving to the upper house and with the goal of having it finalized in December, uh, taking effect in January. So that's the dialogue that we were having, and then as the secretary uh, alluded to, four months after they start the trade, uh, they implement the first phase, they start negotiations for the second phase. And so great deal of opportunity, I think, and optimism moving forward. And I would just add that this, this agreement was important because as Japan moved ahead with the uh, TPP-11, or now called the CPTPP, uh, the United States was at a disadvantage when it comes to tariffs. Uh, so countries that went ahead with that agreement uh, had an advantage over us, and so it was critically important that we got a deal done and do, did so in in short order, really. And so uh, remember that this agreement in the food and agriculture space takes us from where 30% of the food and ag products imported, well, exported from the United States into Japan uh, are currently 
tariff-free or have a preferential tariff, that number goes to 90% of the food and ag products will be tariff-free or have preferential tariffs. So, uh, again, this puts us back on a level playing field. In fact, it will give us a slight advantage in some categories. And we're just getting started, uh, as, as we both mentioned here, the uh, work will continue on negotiating a full free trade agreement. So, uh, yes, this was very, very important. And, uh, again, there will be opportunities for us uh, down the road in this market. Uh, Dustin Hoffman from Agribusiness Radio. Yes, thank you for uh, taking my question. Uh, I know you said that uh, you've been talking a lot about the agriculture trade as part of the new agreement. Uh, I know former Governor Tom Bilsack has said a couple times that the, the dairy industry is coming up short in, in that uh, agreement as compared to what TPP maybe would have been. Um, any comments or any uh, discussion on what can be done? I know Iowa's not the biggest dairy producing state, but any uh, comment on what can be done to help bridge that gap just a little bit? Well, Dustin, I think the important thing to remember here is we have a phase one trade agreement, and, and it did address uh, will, will really some important market, a very more important market for us in that it addresses pork, uh, beef, corn, ethanol uh, in this phase one. But it is uh, absolutely true that there are additional issues that need to be dealt with. And, again, that's why it's so important that, that it has been talked about. I was uh, in New York back in September when the president and Prime Minister Abe met and uh, signed the intent to do this deal. And at that time, they both talked about repeatedly how this was phase one and that we would be entering into continued negotiations for a full free trade agreement. And, and that is absolutely true. So there are still issues to be dealt with. Uh, phase one is just that. And uh, I think there's, again, reason to be optimistic that those additional food and ag pieces, along with, you know, the broader uh, trade relationship between the United States and, and uh, Japan, will be addressed in that trade agreement. So. Uh, there is more work to be done, but we're very pleased and, and well positioned to take advantage of an opportunity to expand export in this Phase 1 agreement. In fact, it was written in Phase 1. They read that to us when we did the embassy visit that they would restart the negotiations four months after. So they went into the attempt knowing that this was Phase 1 and they were moving forward from there, and they really wanted to start that process relatively <clears> soon, and uh, it was incorporated in the document. Next, we'll go off to um, Katarina Sestarek at Iowa Public Radio. Hi. Um, so with these um, big big products that are benefiting from this trade deal, pork, beef, corn, and ethanol, um, has on this trade mission, have you secured any sort of deal or, or specific agreement for Iowa products specifically with any Japanese companies or anything like that, or have any promises been made? Well, you know, our our mission is to look for opportunities to grow investment and exports for Iowa, and we've had some very productive calls, so it's the beginning of a relationship. Uh, there's always a lot of follow-up afterwards, but I can't stress the importance of the face-to-face meetings, especially uh, with our Asian partners. It is it critical. Uh, they expect that. And to sit down across from them and have a dialogue and talk about what we're doing in the state of Iowa and the opportunities that exist are critical. And we have a great story to tell. This is a great time to be doing business in Iowa. And uh, we have had back-to-back meetings. So I can tell you the, the uh, agenda that they put in place has been uh, productive. And I'm looking forward to doing some follow-up. And uh, we've had great conversations and uh, very optimistic about some opportunities moving forward. And I would just add that, you know, Remember that we, uh, we've we been here in this market for decades. Um, most times what we're talking about is an extension or an expansion of, of a business that we're doing together. And, and again, uh, and it's part of, as the governor said, it's about relationships and, and meeting with customers to hear their concerns, show respect, show appreciation. And, and, again, we're optimistic that those things will all lead to, yes, increase opportunities to move product into this market. So uh, it's all part of a process. But, again, one of a feeling of great optimism here as we uh, as we look for this agreement to come into place. Um, as a reminder, if you are trying to ask a question, to hit the raise your hand icon, and we will and you'll enter the queue. And you can also type if you're available on the webinar. You can you can also type in your question, and we will be able to uh, read it out loud and get, and get it answered. All right. 
Um, with, with no further questions, um, we are going to close the conversation, and Keely and I are available for, for follow-up if uh, anybody needs our, our help with anything as you're filing stories today. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.